We're going to finish talking about what sets can't be done with finite state machines. We did this idea of diagonalization on Sunday, which is this jackhammer of a tool that always can spit out a set kind of outside of its collection. And we, we banged diagonalization on finite state machines and found out that there was the set of binary strings that represent finite state machines that don't accept themselves. And that set couldn't possibly be in our list of finite state machines. And that idea, the barber who, does, who shaves everybody except himself, the finite state machine that accepts everybody except itself, those kind of things is what diagonalization is about. And they always produce kind of the exception, the thing you're looking for. Except for finite state machines, it's better to use more subtle tools, not the huge jackhammer, because there's a lot of other more simple sets that are also not able to be accepted by finite state machines. And the main way we do this with finite state machines is, is with a tool called the pumping lemma, which we've talked about informally up till now, uh, but never formally. And we're going to do it very carefully today with some very specific, detailed examples. Finish with that. Depending on where we're up to, I, I, I have two more topics that I may do today. And here's what they are. One is I want to finish that triangle of equivalence for regular expressions, deterministic finite machines, and non-deterministic finite state machines, and add in one more, make it a foursome, called a uh, right linear grammar, or a left linear grammar, one of those, and talk about grammars. That's one thing. The other thing is I want to show you how to minimize a finite state machine. My gut instinct is that I want to leave the minimizing the finite state machine to a separate day, because I want you all clear and, uh, and fresh, and it's kind of a topic that is a little open-ended in the fact that the algorithm we actually use, the idea is not too hard, but then how you actually implement it, there's a lot of different ways. And I'm leaving one of those ways for my triple extra credit problem set. Uh, <laughs> triple extra credit. It's like triple chocolate brownies. Is that the one that was someone's famous paper? Or? Yeah. yeah. That's right. <laughs> um, actually, that, before, it's not like, oh, gee, I can have a homework problem. You know, that was like, like a well-known paper. But the truth is, what happens with well-known papers is that they slowly integrate themselves into the graduate textbooks and then into the undergraduate textbooks as exercises. Mm -hmm. Typically, by somebody telling you something can be done, it makes it much easier. And then secondly, by somebody giving you a hint about how it can be done based on the stuff in the chapter, it sometimes makes it really not so difficult. Uh, Nevertheless, this particular problem is a famous paper, which is how to minimize a finite state machine in order n log n time. The really simple way to do it is, is uh, n cubed. If you think about it a little more, you get it down to n squared. And this paper uh, got it down to n log n. I don't think it can beat that. So in every finite state automaton book that's fairly large nowadays, you can find this question as a double star or an extra credit problem at the end of the chapter. You know, here's a hint about how to do the data structures. Make the algorithm work in n log n. And then we'll give a reference to the initial paper, which I think is by Hopcroft and Ullman, who wrote one of the textbooks on um, theory of computation and did a lot of work in it over the years. So it, I threw it on because it is something interesting to think about. And for those of you who like algorithms and, and programming, it's a fun programming project, too. But we won't get to that probably today. We'll probably do that tomorrow. I'm going to spend today talking about pumping lemma and about these ideas of a of a linear grammar, or what a grammar is. OK. Pumping lemma. OK. As I said before, the pumping lemma is used to show or exhibit or prove that a set is not acceptable by any finite state machine, that it exists outside the horizon of finite state machines. And the way it works is, it turns out that if you have a set that is accepted by a finite state machine, that it has a certain property. It can be pumped up somehow. We'll be very specific about what that means in a minute. Therefore, if you can show that a set does not have that property, that pumping property, then it couldn't possibly have come from a finite state machine. So this lemma is written down in the forward way, usually. If something is a regular set, then it, needs this prop then it needs to have this property, this pumping property. But we use it backwards. We use it to show that, give me a set. I'll show you it doesn't have this pumping property. And I will therefore conclude that it can't be a regular set. So the pumping lemma is written as regular set implies pumping property. But we use it in the contrapositive way. 
I don't know if that's the right word, but we use it the backwards way. Not pumping property implies not regular set. Remember that A implies B is the same as not B implies not A? They're identical, and it's logically equivalent. We did that many months ago. If not, just think about it. They really are equivalent, and they're the same logically. OK, so the first thing is, what is this pumping property? And then once we write it down rigorously and carefully, how do we show that some set doesn't have it? And it's very much like this dialogue we went through in the last lecture and the lecture before. But today, we're going to do it very, very specifically, now that you've got the background. So here's what we do. Somebody gives you a regular set. That means there must be some finite state machine that accepts it. Let's assume you calculate the finite state machine, and you have it in front of you. Then here's what the pumping limit says. Let me write it out in real detail. It's going to take a whole board just to write it. If L is a regular set, then All right, I'm going to say it once intuitively, and then we'll write it down in detail. If L is a regular set, then if you have a string in L that's supposed to be accepted by this machine that's long enough, long enough meaning longer than the number of states in the machine that accepts it, so that it has to loop. If you have a string that's supposed to be accepted, and it's long enough so that it has to loop in its computation, then there exists that loop. And then if you pump up symbols in that loop, the resulting pumped up strings also have to get accepted. That's basically what it says. But writing it down rigorously is going to be ugly. There's no nice way to write this. If L is a regular set, then for every, this is the abbreviation for for every, for every Z in L, Z is a string. So for every string in L, where the number of symbols in Z, that's the sign for the number of symbols in Z. The number of symbols in Z is greater than or equal to the number of states in the machine for L. Okay, so that's the first step. For every string in L where it's long enough, where it's bigger than the number of states in the machine for L, what then? How do you continue? For every one of those strings, there is a way to split that string up into three parts. The first part is the part that goes up to the first loop. The second part is the actual loop itself. And the third part is the rest of it. Keep in mind that the third part may have loops itself. Okay, the second part is only the very first place that you find a loop. So there's going to be a way to split Z up into three parts. The first part is up until the first loop. The second part is the loop itself. And the third part is the rest of the string. So we write, there exists. That's there exists. You're going to simplify what you just said. <laughs> yeah, it's cool. <laughs> there exists um, VWX, three parts, such that. Z equals VWX. The string we were given at the beginning is equal to the concatenation of these three, put one against the other. And there's some conditions on VWX that help us and give us some power here. The loop has to come within the first, you know, let's give this a name. Um, instead of saying number of states in the machine for L, I'm going to write a line up here. There exists an n equal to the number of states in the machine for L. That'll save me writing this over and over again. I can just write n. If nobody minds, I'll do that. OK, so if L is a regular set, there exists an n equal to the number of states in the machine for L. And for all the strings in L, where the number of symbols is bigger than n, then there's a three parts to it. You can write it in three parts. Such that what? What about these three parts? The loop has to come in the first n symbols. OK, the VW. So by the time the VW is over, you can't go more than n symbols.